Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. It is a pleasure to welcome you to Broome County. Before we begin, I would like to recognize some of the special guests we have with us today. City of Binghamton Mayor Rich David. <laughs> Village of Johnson City uh, Mayor Greg Demey. <laughs> Village of Endicott Deputy Mayor Eileen Konechny. <laughs> Town of Union Supervisor Rose Sotak. We have our two co-chairs from our Southern Tier Regional Economic Development Council. Co-chair Tom Tranter is here. And our very own co-chair, Binghamton University President Harvey Stanger is here. Uh, Assemblywoman Don Lopardo. And New York State Senator Fred Akshar. And uh, last but certainly not least, CEO and President of Empire State Development, Howard Zemsky. Yeah. And I also want to thank all of our other local elected officials that are here today. Thank you very much. So we are especially thrilled to welcome Governor Andrew Cuomo back to Broome County. They say that when the governor is in town, good things happen. And we are so excited to see what is in store. This morning, we will hear first from Governor Cuomo. We will then hear from CEO and President of Empire State Development, Howard Zemsky, Binghamton Mayor Richard David, State Senator Fred Akshar, and State Assembly Member Don Lepardo. Since he took office, the governor has been a champion for upstate New York and for Broome County. The governor has transformed the relationship between upstate New York and Albany, and today, New York State is making smart and strategic investments to unlock the potential that exists all across the state. From supporting economic growth and jobs and new and emerging industries to rebuilding our infrastructure, the governor has ensured places like Broome County can continue their upward trajectory. On a personal note, as a new county executive, I am deeply grateful for the support and attention Governor Cuomo has given to Broome County. When we have a major weather emergency, he's the first person to call me and ask what he can do for help. He came through for us big time by helping to secure the Dick's Sporting Goods Distribution Center, the largest of its kind in the nation, along with 500 much needed jobs. And thanks to his support, we are building a world-class pharmacy and nursing school right across the street, right here in Johnson City. So I wanna thank the governor for being here today, and I look forward to continuing to work with him and his team to move our economy forward. So please join me in welcoming the 56th governor of the great state of New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be back at the Fire Stage Theater. I just wish I had some talent that I could do something other than uh, stand up here and uh, uh, talk, if I could uh, sing. Would you like to hear me sing? <laughs> yeah, no, you wouldn't. Really, trust me, you wouldn't. Uh, but it's a pleasure to be back. And uh, you have a, a great blessing here in elected officials who are in the business for the right reason and who work together, which is so important in government today. Uh, where you see government that is so polarized, so politicized, everyone fights everyone, and the people lose. Your delegation actually works together. And let me start by giving the county executive a big round of applause, Jason Garner. <laughs> My colleagues from Albany, and I mean that word sincerely, we work together, we do the people's business first. Fred Akshar and Donald Lopardo, pleasure to be with them. Great Mayor Richard David, pleasure to be with him. <laughs> Howard Zemsky, who is very important because he's the head of economic development for the state of New York and because he has the check today. So <laughs> give him a big round of applause. 
and Tom Tranter and Harvey Stanger, who uh, run the Regional Economic Development Corporation, and Harvey, who's doing just a great job with Binghamton University. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, the Southern Tier for a lot of years uh, was a place of economic decline for generations. And I believe there's a, a, a downward spiral. You know, they talk about synergy normally in the positive sense, that there's a positive synergy. There's also a negative synergy. And when things start to decline, the decline starts to feed on itself. And some businesses start to leave, and then some people start to leave, and then some more businesses start to leave. Uh, and then it gets worse and it gets worse. That was the story of the Southern Tier, but it was the story of upstate New York for many, many years. Why? Well, a couple of reasons. Upstate New York was dedicated to a manufacturing economy. What did we do? We made shoes in Johnson City. That's what we did. That was the industry. We made steel in Buffalo. Uh, Rochester was Kodak. And you had economies that were dependent on one industry, and then overnight, those industries left for one reason or another. They went overseas, cheaper labor, new technology. And then upstate New York, Southern Tier, had to transform their economies to a new economy that was competitive, and there was no one there to help them. Uh, we changed all that, and we started a new strategy that basically has three prongs. First, on the state side, because the state was part of the problem. It was not part of the solution. First, the state government was uh, blind to upstate New York. Uh, and I don't say that with pride. I say that with shame. But the state government was too focused on downstate New York. Why? Because most of the legislators come from downstate New York. And it's human nature. Legislators want to do for their district. They want to bring home goodies for their district. And the overwhelming majority in both the Assembly and the Senate were downstate New York. New York City and Long Island, that's the population center. You pick representatives by the population center. So there was too much focus on downstate, not enough focus on upstate. Also, the state, many of its actions were counterproductive and actually chased businesses and people from the state. Meaning what? Meaning when you continue to raise taxes, people and businesses will leave. They're not chained to the state of New York. And they're smart. You keep raising taxes, there's a breaking point. And they say, I'll move to another state. Businesses are more and more mobile. People are more and more mobile. They'll find the economy that serves them best. And the state, for many years, raised taxes higher and higher and higher because the state spent a lot of money. When you spend a lot of money, you have to raise taxes to spend the money. We turned that around. First, the state had to get taxes under control. It had to. To get taxes under control, you have to get spending out of control. It's a simple formula. You want to lose weight? Intake fewer calories. In other words, eat less. My grandfather used to say, you want another secret for a diet? Shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's very easily said, it's just harder to do, right? Reduce state spending. The state of New York, for decades, spent at a rate 11% more every year, 8% more every year. The state government spent at a rate that was higher than the increase in the income of the people of the state, believe it or not. Now you say, how can that happen? How can the government spend more money than the people are making? I don't know. 
but it did, year after year after year. So you had to get spending under control. You had to get, get caloric intake under control. And that was hard, and it took discipline, and it took restraint, but we did it. The past seven years, year-to-year -year spending increases were 2%. 2% is the level of spending increase in the history of the state of New York. All right, think about that. Now, you say, well, how can that be? Governor Cuomo, you're a Democrat. You Democrats like to spend money. How can a Democratic governor have controlled spending? It's a little stereotypical to think all Democrats are the same, all Republicans are the same. But any Democrat who can count understands that you had to control spending. So we control spending, we got down the rate of spending increase to 2%, lower than any governor in state history, Democrat or Republican. Nelson Rockefeller, great Republican, spending went up 11% year to year. Hugh Carey, Democrat, spending went up about 8% year to year. My father, great Democrat, spending went up about 6% year to year. George Pataki, 12 years, Republican conservative, spending went up about 5 or 6% every year. You can't sustain that spending level. We got it down to 2% with the help of my friends in the Assembly and the Senate, which wasn't always easy, wasn't always pleasant, but we did it. When you get spending down, you can reduce taxes. And we've reduced taxes all across the board. Middle class taxes, lowest level since 1947, up to $300,000. Corporate tax rate, lowest rate since 1968. Manufacturing rate, lowest rate since 1917. So now you can say to people in businesses, there's no reason for you to move away because of high taxes because our taxes are going down. The second part of the strategy was we had a shift of focus from downstate New York to upstate New York, which was easier said than done, but we did it. And one of the things I'm most proud of is that I can stand before you today and say that New York State, under my administration, has invested more in upstate New York than any government in the history of the state of New York, over $25 billion in upstate New York. $3.2 billion invested in the southern tier. And what does that mean for government to invest? We invest in economic development. We invest in businesses that will stay here and create jobs. We invest in infrastructure, which is so vitally important. Everybody talks about new infrastructure. Vice President Joe Biden used to talk about infrastructure and how the infrastructure was crumbling. President Trump ran for office. To me, his most appealing promise when he was running, that he would invest in infrastructure and he had a $1 trillion plan to invest in infrastructure. Because when you invest in infrastructure, you make money. It sounds like a cost, but it's not a cost. You invest in infrastructure, and businesses will come. And when the businesses come, then you're making money. This state is investing more in infrastructure than any state in the country. They're talking about it. We're doing it. New airport in Rochester, new airport in Syracuse, new airport in Elmira, new airport in Plattsburgh, more roads and bridges being rebuilt than ever before, new LaGuardia Airport, new JFK Airport. We are going to be the state that has the infrastructure that businesses need to transport goods, to come in, move, and to get out. The third part of the strategy was uh, to know what you don't know. It's one of my favorite expressions. Just know what you don't know. Know your limitations. It's hard because you have to get your ego in check. And we all like to think, well, we all can figure out everything. 
do what you do and know what you don't do. State government in Albany does not know the best business plan for the southern tier. We don't. Uh, and there is no one-size-fits-all business plan. It doesn't work that way. You want to grow the economy in the southern tier, it's a little different plan than in the North Country. It's a different plan than Long Island. We're one state, but these are very, very different places. And the business plan for a region has to build on the assets of that region. You have BU, and that could be a great economic engine. But you have to understand what you have and what the liabilities are and how to build that economy. So rather than try to do it from Albany, we said we're going to ask the regions and the business community and the academic community to come together in that region and you develop the business plan. And we will then invest in your business plan. So Tom Tranter, Harvey Stanger, are the co-chairs of what we call a Regional Economic Development Council. The Regional Economic Development Council, businessmen, academics, government leaders, all at one table, all designing one plan, not going off in different directions, one plan, one focus, one idea on how to drive the economy, and then we'll invest in that plan. And we'll invest in the businesses that that plan wants to see grow. And that's what we call the Regional Economic Development Councils. You put those three parts together, and you see the arrows turn in the right direction. A state government that spends less money and has reduced taxes, a state government that focuses on upstate New York and understands that this state is bigger than just New York City uh, and that upstate is the area that really needs the help. And number three, you have to listen to the local communities, help them develop their plan and build their economy. And that's just what we've been doing. And today we're taking a giant step forward in that direction. One of the recommendations of your Regional Economic Development Council is to give them an investment fund that they can work with local businesses to invest in a local business that will stay and create jobs. And one of the things your REDC recommended is that they would like a $20 million fund created so that they could grow businesses in the southern tier in the greater Binghamton area uh, and that they could control that growth because they knew better than Albany. And today we're here to say you are right, they are right, we're going to put our money where our mouth is and we're going to fund a twenty million dollar fund to the greater Binghamton <laughs> Association to actually grow businesses. And we've turned the tide. You can feel the tide has turned. Uh, you can see the signs of growth. You see the new pharmacy school, the new nursing school. You see the investments in Alstom and how they're doing. Uh, what we're now doing with hemp, I'm very excited about because that is a great agricultural product where I believe we can lead the nation in developing that product. And it's a market that nobody has fully explored. Uh, and the numbers uh, also show the proof. When we started, the unemployment rate was 8.2%. Today, it is 5.2%. So more people are working, more jobs are coming in. That's what it's all about. Eight to five is great progress, but we're not gonna stop until that five is zero. And every man, woman, and child who wants to work, has a job, with a career and a future and opportunity right here in the Southern Tier. And it's my, my pleasure and my honor to be part of it. We're on the right track, we just have to keep going. And that's exactly what we plan to do. 
So congratulations to you. Congratulations to the Greater Binghamton Fund. Uh, invest the funds wisely. I'm sure you will. Plus, we'll be checking every week to make sure that you are. Uh, but you have a great track record and a great track record to build on. So congratulations to all of you. Uh, we're excited for the future. Thank you for having us today. And now let me give you to Howard Zemsky, who is the guru of economic development and the man who actually has the money. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. Much appreciated. Hello, everyone. Great to be with you here in Johnson City. You know, the governor always uh, gives me the same words of wisdom just before we come out. He says, Howard, don't mess it up. <laughs> um, it's hard for me to mess this one up because you know there's $20 million. But more importantly, um, I have lived uh, for 35 years the upstate experience. I'm your upstate cousin to the west a bit in Buffalo. Uh, and so I know what 40, almost 40 years that I've lived there of, you know, kind of small or large steps backwards economically uh, has meant. I know some of the challenges and I know how good it feels to really start to turn it around. You know, the interesting thing about Buffalo and upstate cities just across the board is for all those decades that we lost population, right, we spread ourselves out across three times the land mass in some cases. It was a very curious phenomenon. And in doing so, we kind of left some of the cities behind. We left the historic cities and the fabric of the cities behind. We spread out, we lost population, and we kind of disinvested in many of the cities upstate. And now here we are really turning the corner with flexible manufacturing and nursing schools and pharmacy schools and so many other investments. And if you look at the cities, they still need work and they still, still need help. 40 years of losing population was disproportionately spread on the young people. We lost a disproportionate share of young people in upstate New York. Doesn't matter what city you mention. Doesn't matter what city upstate you mention. When you lose that many young people, those are the people of childbearing age. That's where population growth comes from. So you cannot grow your population as a region or a city while you're losing your young people. You have continued population loss baked in the demographic cake unless you turn it around. And we're turning it around here now. We're turning it around in other cities in upstate. Leveraging the investments like the pharmacy school, like the nursing school, like the, all the innovation uh, investments, the workforce investments, it's incumbent on us to attract and retain young people to grow that young population again. That's what this fund does. It's going to encourage people and incentivize people to invest in these places that we forgot for too long, in Endicott, in Johnson City, and Binghamton. I have lived this program just like this in Buffalo. It's amazing the transformation it has had in the attitude and the trajectory of that city. And you are starting to do it here, and we're going to accelerate that with this investment. We have to keep the young people. We've got to bring them back, and we've got to show the right trajectory. When I talk to businesses around the state and here in the Binghamton and Southern Tier, you might think they want to talk about taxes. You might think they want to talk about a lot of different things. You know what they want to talk about? Downtown. What can we do to help? We ask them, what can we do to help? Invest in downtown. I got to recruit talent here. I got to keep talent here. We want our young people to stay here. And that's what this fund is all about. There are no silver bullets to economic development. There's no one single project. The governor has put together a holistic philosophy around workforce and innovation and investing in tradable sectors and investing in downtowns and the revitalization. That's what makes his approach to economic development so great. 
It's not a spectator sport anymore. We don't just look and see what Albany does. We are all together, all of us on the field, developing plans, and the governor has given us all the tools and more than we ever, ever, ever could have imagined to really implement these plans. So I want to thank, again, Tom and Harvey, everyone from the REDC, uh, everyone who's involved in economic development because it's a team sport, but particularly want to thank the governor because as no one has ever given upstate as much attention and as much resources as we have today. And <laughs> And with that, it is my pleasure and privilege to introduce to you Mayor Richard David, the Mayor of Binghamton. Well, good morning, everyone. It's not always an easy thing to do to follow two individuals that have brought $20 million to your community, but I'm going to try. Thank you, Governor Cuomo. This is truly an exciting day for Binghamton and our neighbors throughout the area. In Binghamton, we have made tremendous progress revitalizing our community and strengthening our economy. With the support of Governor Cuomo, we have made critical investments that are already paying dividends. Businesses are opening, jobs are coming back, and the southern tier is soaring. With today's announcement, we have a unique opportunity to work with our state partners to continue the progress we've made. The Greater Binghamton Fund part of the Governor's Upstate Revitalization Initiative is an incredible program to maintain and accelerate the transformation we are seeing across the region. It is clear that Governor Cuomo recognizes the potential in upstate economies, including right here in Broome County. This innovative investment will significantly improve our urban neighborhoods and help strengthen our communities, our infrastructure, and our economy. And we are beyond grateful for the opportunity to make this city an even more attractive place to live, to work, to raise a family. The possibilities for the future of Binghamton are endless, and I am extremely excited to see where this great investment will take us. Things like this don't just happen. It takes someone with a vision and a leader to make these happen. And I, I can tell you in my short tenure, as mayor, we have never seen this much focus on upstate and on the city of Binghamton. And that is not a coincidence. We have a governor and a leader who sees the big picture and is allocating the resources that we need to work at the local level to make things a reality. And I also want to point out how rare it is that you have someone who is, who is allocating $20 million because we at the local level have come up with a plan and said, this is what we need. This is not top down, it's the exact opposite. It's the bottom up. We have worked together through the Regional Economic Development Council. We've come up with a plan and the governor has put his endorsement on it. And we are truly grateful for that support and that, that recognition. So it is my uh, certainly pleasure to thank you again, Governor Cuomo, for recognizing the importance of upstate and the potential for Binghamton and our community to grow. And it is certainly now my pleasure to introduce another partner and champion for the Southern Tier, our Senator, Fred Akshar. Mayor, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you. Please give our host and hostess a big round of applause, Mr. and Mrs. Krajan and their family. Many of, you heard, many of you have heard me say this many times. The only thing that we need to be successful is an opportunity. And today we are taking a huge step in creating that much needed opportunity and hope for the families of the Southern Tier and the greater Binghamton community. Governor Cuomo, I especially want to thank you for being here and for believing in upstate New York. Ladies and gentlemen, give our governor a round of applause. Governor, the Upstate Revitalization Initiative, the DRI, the REDC, all of these programs are setting an example for the entire nation to follow, and you should be applauded for that. 
And here in SD52, we are especially excited about the Greater Binghamton Fund because this $20 million program will continue the progress we are making to strengthen our economies all throughout the southern tier. And I've said this many times, many of you have heard me say this, that the best government policy comes from the bottom up. You heard Mayor David say that, you heard the governor say that. It com comes by involving the stakeholders at the ground level, not the 30,000 foot level by bureaucrats in Albany, which happen all too often. And as I stand at this podium, I look out on this crowd and I see our stakeholders. I see Harvey Stanger, I see Tom Tranter, I see private investors like Mark Yanati. I see our friends from labor, our friends in education, Dr. Sue McLeod, Al Bike is with us. I see our community partners, Endicott Proud, Dick Testa is with us. This is the way things get done. This is the appropriate way for things to happen. Give our stakeholders a round of applause, please. <laughs> Governor, I really have to thank you for being committed to this bottom-up approach and for letting the people of the southern tier decide their destiny through the utilization of the Greater Binghamton Fund. Now, I may get stung for what I'm going to say next, not by you, Governor. Contrary to what some have said recently, we don't want families moving from this community. We don't want families moving from an upstate community to leave in search of opportunity in other states. We want that opportunity to come right here in the communities where so many of us live and so many of us are proud to raise our families. So, Governor, the Southern Tier community is looking forward to working with you through this process and watching the transformations and successes happen across our very own region together. With that, it is my great pleasure to introduce my esteemed colleague and dear friend, Assemblywoman Donna Lepardo. his esteemed and short colleague. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Of course, you've heard it all from uh, the, the speakers who came before me. I just want to provide you with just a little bit of context uh, for what's being announced today, but, but certainly a deep welcome and sincere gratitude to the governor for being here with this, with this fabulous news. You know, the Greater Binghamton Fund was a central component of the uh, Upstate Revitalization Initiative uh, it was, in, in fact, one of the things that was so compelling about the application. Four strategies were developed by this group across a number of counties, not just Broome, but across the entire Southern Tier region. Investing in advanced manufacturing, transforming the food and agricultural industry, promoting Southern Tier's innovative culture, and building the greater Binghamton innovative ecosystem. This fund is central to that. But keep in mind, and I can't emphasize this enough, this group of multiple counties decided that one-fourth of their effort should be focused on these three innovation districts in Johnson City, Binghamton, and here in Endicott. With the incubator in Binghamton, what's going on across the street, the exciting developments at Euron campus, we're starting to see the fruits of all of this focus. This fund is going to help stimulate private investment, support development in our urban communities, help with vacant industrial space, mixed-use housing, the very things that all of us have talked about for so long. And it's so overdue and time to make these investments. So, Governor, thank you for establishing the URI. Thank you for seeing this through and for being so committed to upstate New York. It really means a lot to us. I want to thank the RADC, Howard, Zemsky, and all of the community leaders who are here. I'd like to give a special shout out to Endicott Proud who worked so very hard on their community, the folks in Johnson City and the city of Binghamton all together who believe in this place. This announcement today is for all of you. Thank you.